Hey, it's Ashley at Smart Edition Academy. And in today's video, we have a T7 practice test for math that we can do together. I'll go through each question and you can follow along. Okay, also in the description of this video, you will find links to our Facebook study group for the TS exam, our TS bootcamp and our full online course. So let's jump into our practice math test together today. We have 38 questions and let's see if we can do it before time runs out. A patient is instructed to take 400 milligrams of medicine per dose. If the prescribing doctor gave the patient eight grams of medicine, how many doses does the patient have? Okay, so we have 400 milligrams per dose. And let's go back up. The doctor gave the patient eight grams. So because we don't have the same units, I'm going to convert one of these to be the same as the other. So I'm gonna go from grams to milligrams. So we just have to multiply by 1,000. So eight grams is 8,000 milligrams. And now I take that 8,000 and divide it by 400 per dose. And I will get 20 doses. All right, <coughs> excuse me. Let's change seven quarters to a percent. So when we have a fraction, we wanna turn it into a percent. A good first step is to go from a fraction to a decimal. So fractions really are just division. So seven divided by four would give me 1.75. Now to turn this into a percent, swoop the decimal to the right twice. So 175%. Veronica gets stuck at an intersection with road construction on her way to work and is running late. She has 25 minutes to travel 40 miles. How fast would she need to drive if she wanted to get to work on time? So I'm gonna set up a little ratio here. We know she has to go 40 miles in 25 minutes. Okay, so that would be miles per minute, which we, all of our answers are in miles per hour. That's how we describe speed, right? So I need to change the units of this to miles per hour. So I'm gonna multiply by the 60 minutes that are in one hour, okay? I know to put the 60 minutes on top because what I want is for these to cancel out. So that's a little trick there to know which one goes on the top, which one goes on the bottom. So now I can just multiply across the top and the bottom. So I will get 2,400 over 25 and notice how we have miles over hours. So that's miles per hour. So when I divide, I get 96 miles per hour. Okay, next one. Find the circumference in centimeters of a circle with a radius of 11 centimeters. Use 3.14 for pi. So circumference of a circle is pi times diameter. Some of you may also know that you could write this as two pi r when r is the radius. That's because the diameter is the same thing as two times the radius. So if we know that our radius is 11, we could either plug it into the first formula, we're using 3.14 for pi and we just have to double it, or we could use this formula to, we're using 3.14 for pi and then we can just plug in the radius here which is 11. So either way is fine. I'm gonna just simplify all of that to find that our circumference will be 69.08 centimeters, 69.08. Okay, either formula will help you get there. You just gotta make sure you plug in either the diameter if you're using this formula or the radius if you're using this one. Okay, let's convert 48 inches to yards. So to go from inches to yards, for me, it would be easier to go from my 48 inches to feet first, and then whatever I get in feet, then I can convert that to yards. Okay, so 48 inches, we know there are 12 inches in a foot, so I will divide by 12. 48 inches is four feet. So now to go from feet to yards, there are three yards or three feet in a yard, I apologize. So divide this by three and we will get four third yards. 
Now that is an improper fraction. Let's just turn four thirds into a mixed number. Three goes into four once with one left over. One and one third. Change 0 0.63 repeating. So this line on the top, remember that means repeating to a fraction and simplify completely. So when you have a repeating decimal like this, this is 63 hundredths. So 63 hundredths would be if it wasn't repeating. So the little trick here is instead of 100, this is just 99. So this is 63 over 99. And now all I have to do is simplify this. So it looks like we can divide both of these by 9. So 63 divided by 9 is 7. 99 divided by 9 is 11. So 7 elevenths. A regular hexagon has a side length of 5 inches and a potham of 2 inches. Find the area in square inches. Okay, so we're given this area formula. So area is equal to 1 half times the apothem, which is 2. And my P here is perimeter. So the perimeter of my hexagon, if I have a regular hexagon with a side length of 5, that means that all of the sides are 5. So to find the perimeter, we would have to do 5 times how many sides there are. A hexagon has 6, so my perimeter is 30. So 1 half times 2 times 30. So these would actually cancel out, and my area would just be 30 square inches. All right, let's convert 14 centimeters to inches. So it gives us our conversion here, which is nice. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So 14 centimeters right, to inches, we need to divide by 2.54. Okay, so when we divide, we will get five and 51 hundredths. Okay, so that is our inches. Three siblings have a cookie eating contest. If two siblings each eat one third of a box of cookies and the other sibling manages to eat three fourths of a box of cookies. So two siblings eat one third each and then the other one eats three fourths. How many boxes of cookies did the siblings eat? So I need to do one third plus one third, okay, each of the two siblings did that, and then add the three fourths to that. So in order to add these fractions, we need a common denominator. So it might actually be easier just to combine these since those are already the same. And now three and four, we could use a denominator of 12. Three times four is 12, so two times four is eight. And that's how we convert this one. And then four times three is 12. So three times three is nine. So add these together and you will get 17 twelfths. But we need our answer as a mixed number. So 12 goes into 17 once with five left over. So one and five twelfths. A young boy gets his aunt to pledge $4.25 a mile for every mile he walks at a charity event. And it's per mile, and then he completes 22 miles. How much money will he have raised from his aunt? Okay, so for this question, we're gonna take what he gets per mile and multiply it by how many miles he went. So 425 times 22 will get me $93.50. Okay, the graph shows the amount of rainfall in inches for 12 days. Which statement is true for the line graph? So let's take a peek at our line graph here. We have a mountain inches vertically and then the day. So it's kind of following this trend. It looks like it's just steadily decreasing, not really like fluctuating up and down. Looks like it decreases pretty much every day almost. Um, so let's look at our options. Did it rain more than one inch for half of the days? So one inch would be here. Um, it's only four out of 12 days, so that's definitely not it. Did the average amount of rainfall be one inch? Seems unlikely since so many more are below one inch. Um, we could go through and follow or and find the 
average, but seems like it might be a little bit of a time waster. So let's look at the other one. So we know this one isn't right. We could come back to that second one. It did not rain on the final day. Data was recorded. This is the final day, but does look like there's some rain there. And then the last one says the amount of rainfall steadily decreased throughout the days. So just like when we initially analyzed the graph, that's what we see. So I'm not even going to go back and find the average. I know that one is correct. So this way we just kind of saved ourselves a little bit of time by not going through and finding that average. All right, let's change 82 hundredths to a fraction and then reduce completely. So as long as we know our place value, converting decimals to fractions is pretty easy. So I'm just going to write the number I see, 82, okay, and look at the last place value. Where does it end? This ends in the hundredths place. So I'm going to put this over 100, 82 over 100. So from here, how do I simplify? Well, it looks like they are both even, so I can divide each of these by two. That's usually a good place to start. 41 over 50. Um, I don't think they share any other factors, so I think we're done. 41 50ths. All right, what is 15 out of 125 as a percent? If we write this as a fraction, 15 over 125, that's what that means. Then we can turn it into a decimal. So just divide those two and you will get 12 hundredths. And then all I have to do is swoop my decimal to the right twice to turn it into a percent. All right, solve the equation for the unknown. B plus five equals negative 15. So I wanna try to get B by itself. So I need to move this five over. I'm gonna use the opposite operation to get it to cancel out. So I have to subtract five from both sides. So don't be confused by these negative signs in front. Negative 15 minus five is just gonna get more negative. So this is still gonna be negative. And then 15 minus, negative 15 minus five would get me to 20. So this will have to be negative 20. All right, the following circle graph shows what a family spends their income on each month. Select the correct statement for the circle graph. So I'm just taking a peek at this graph real quick. Looks like they spend a lot of money on food and household items and their bills. So let's see what our options are. The family spends more money on miscellaneous items than they put into savings. Uh, so miscellaneous is here, and that is less than what they put into savings. So that one is not correct. They don't spend more on the miscellaneous items. Family spends more money on bills than food and household items. Bills are 30, food and household are 35. So that's also not true. Family bills takes up the biggest proportion of the monthly spending. Uh, nope, food and household items are more. And the last one says the family spends half of their monthly income on mortgage and bills mortgage and bills. So that would be 20% and 30%, which would give me 50%. So that would be half of their income, 50%. Perfect. All right. A patient's thermometer says her body temperature is 23 degrees Celsius, which is how many degrees Fahrenheit? So we have our formula here. Fahrenheit equals nine fifths times whatever our degree Celsius is plus 32. Okay, so let's plug in what we know. So 9 fifths times 23, 23, and then we need to add 32 to that. So we have to make sure we do the multiplication first. So 9 fifths times 23 will give me 41.4, and then add 32 to that. So I should get about 73.4. Um, and if I look at all my answers, I'm going to round to the nearest whole number. So this will just be 73. Students were surveyed about their favorite pet and the bar graph shows the results. If each quantity were to represent three students, how many students were surveyed? All right. So each quantity represents three students. So I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do first is find how many are in each one and then multiply it by three. So 12 dogs, 16 cats, um, fish, that looks like five to me, right? A little bit more than the four. 
birds. I think that should be about nine. It's a little bit hard to tell. I think that's nine. And then gerbils is four and pigs looks like three. So if I add these up, uh, let's see what's an easy way to add these up. 20, 32. I could also plug it in my calculator. Why don't we do that? <laughs> a little bit easier. I won't make any silly mistakes. So I get 49 when I add all this up. And don't forget, we need to multiply this by three because it said each quantity was uh, representing three students. So when I multiply that, I get 147 as the number of students who were surveyed. A toy company manufactures two cycles of a toy with the same percentage of error for each production cycle. If they make 450 toys and have 45 and 45 have errors, how many toys will be made in error if they only made 300 toys in the second cycle? So I see kind of a fairly obvious pattern here. Um, these numbers are kind of nice. Looks like 10% of them have errors. So I can see kind of right away that that's 30. But if you did not see that, you could also just set up a proportion. 45 out of the 450 had errors, and that's going to be equal to how many out of the 300? And then you could cross multiply and solve. So if you want to give that a try, pause the video. And why don't you leave us a comment and let us know if you got the same thing. Convert 1 6 to a decimal and round to the nearest hundredth. All right, so remember, fractions are really just division. So one divided by six, go ahead and plug that in, and you should get 0 0.16 repeating. So what this means is 0 0.16, six, 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 da, 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 da. Sorry, the way that I drew this was not accurate. It should be just over the six. Okay, so the six should repeat. So if you plug that in your calculator, see if you get the same thing. And then from here, if I need to round to the nearest hundredth, this would be 0 0.1 is my tenths place. I need to round this. So it's going to round up to 0 0.17. There we go. A lemonade stand sells glasses of lemonade, but customers come in waves. After each wave, the stand sold nine tenths a tub, three fifths and two sevenths. How many tubs of lemonade did they sell? So we sold nine tenths, nine tenths, and then we sold three fifths, and then we sold two sevenths. So we have to add all of these together. So we need to find a common denominator. I think 70 should work here. So let's turn each of these fractions into a fraction with a denominator of 70. 70, there we go. All right, 10 times seven, so we have to do nine times seven, 63. All right, five times what gets me to 70? It should be 14. Uh, so three times 14 is 42. And then seven times 10 is 70, so this will be 20. So now I'm gonna add the top, 63 plus 42 plus 20. Gets me 125 seventieths. So now let's just turn this into, yep, we've got to turn this into a mixed number. So 70 goes into 125 once with 55 left over. Yeah, 55 over 70, but I need to simplify this still. So let's divide each of these by five. Five should work, 11 over 14. 1 and 11 fourteenths. There we go. All right, let's subtract some fractions here. 7 eighths minus 1 third. 7 eighths minus 1 third. Again, we need a common denominator. So common denominator for 8 and 3, 24 should work. So 8 times 3 gets me to 24. So 7 times 3 is 21. 3 times 8 is 24, 1 times 8 is just 8, so subtract these and we get 13 over 24. Okay, so easiest way to find a common denominator is often just to multiply the denominators and you're good to go. All right, so we are moving right along here. Uh, hope you are following along with me on your own test and Please let us know in the comments if what we are doing is helpful and 
what you need some more help with and what, what other videos could really help you prepare for this TIS exam. All right, we've got some more questions to work through. Let's see what we have up next. Which expression is different from the others? So we have a ratio, a fraction, a percent, and a decimal. I think I'm going to put these all into decimals. That's kind of easier to compare. So 2 to 5, that ratio 2 to 5 means 2 over 5 if we write it as a fraction. And then we can just turn this into a decimal. So 2 divided by 5 will give me 0 0.4. Oh, and that actually is the same thing as this, so we know those are going to be the same. 40%. So to turn this into a decimal, you swoop it to the left twice. So this would be 0 0.40. This trailing 0 at the end here doesn't change the number, so these are actually the same. Um, and then 0 0.04, that is in the wrong place value. That is 4 hundredths, and the rest came out to be 4 tenths. So that one is different than the others. All right, a patient needs to take half a gram a day for one of his medicines. How many milligrams per day does he need for his medicine? So half a gram is equal to how many milligrams? Okay, so we talked a little bit about this in the beginning, I think, where there are 1,000 milligrams in a gram. So we can just multiply this by 1,000 and you will get 500. 500 milligrams. Okay, dividing fractions. So when we divide fractions, I want you to think, or at least this is what helps me, I want you to think of fried chicken. Instead of KFC though, it's KCF. So what this means is keep, change, flip. So that looks like keeping your first fraction 8 over 9, changing division to multiplication, and flipping the second one. So 5 sevenths, flip it to be 7 fifths. And then from here, now we can just multiply. So we just multiply across the top and across the bottom. And it looks like we need to turn this into a mixed number. So 45 goes into 56 once. And that would have 11 left over. So 1 and 11, 40 fifths. Here we go. All right, if 4 plus x is greater than or equal to 3, then looks like they want us to solve 4x. So 4 plus x, all we have to do is subtract this 4 to get x by itself. So subtract 4 from both sides, and we're left with x is greater than or equal to 3 minus 4 would just be negative 1. Nice and easy, one step. So x is greater than or equal to negative 1. All right, let's multiply 1 20th times 3 tenths. So when we multiply fractions, multiply the top. 1 times 3 is 3. Multiply the bottom. 20 times 10 is 200. And there's nothing I can simplify there. So 3 over 200 is our solution. All right, let's perform the operation. So we are adding these polynomials. So the parentheses actually don't even matter. We can just start combining like terms. So I see negative 3x squared plus 5x squared. So negative 3 plus 5 would be a positive 2x squared. And then I have negative 2xy plus 3xy. So a negative 2 plus 3 would be a positive 1xy. And lastly, I have positive 4x squared, or y squared minus 3y squared. So 4 minus 3 is a positive 1. So this would just be positive y squared. So 2x squared plus xy plus y squared. There it is. The number 25 is 5% of what value? Okay, so there are a couple ways that we could do a question like this. We could set up a proportion. So 25 out of something is equal to 5%, which is 5 out of 100. So from here, we could cross multiply and work towards getting x by itself. So this would be 2,500 equals 5x and divide each side by 5 and you will get x equals 500. 
x equals 500, there we go. Okay, the other thing that you could do is you could just take 25 and divide it by 5%, which is 0 0.05. And you will also get 500 that way. So whichever way works for you. The proportions is just like a nice thing to remember so that you can use it at any time because sometimes it can be a little confusing whether you multiply or divide those percents. So there's two strategies for you. All right, a right triangular prism has a base area of 63 square inches and a height of 10 inches. What is the volume? So when we have prisms, we can use the area formula. V equals the air, uh, volume formula, I apologize. Volume equals the area of the base times the height. So this is telling me that the area of the base is 63 and the height is 10. So all I have to do is 63 times 10. Okay, so our volume here would be 630. So this works for all prisms. As long as you have the area of the base or can find the area of the base, then you, all you have to do is multiply it by the height. So 630. Okay, let's add fractions. So we've done at least one or two of these. So this might be a great one to just pause the video, try it on your own and see how it goes. So just remember that we need a common denominator, five and 10. One thing I did say earlier is that you could just multiply them. So we could have a common denominator of 50, but we really just need a multiple of both of these. So I'm gonna choose 10 because that is a multiple of five as well. So four-fifths is the same thing as eight-tenths, and then I can just leave seven-tenths. Saves me a little bit of simplifying down the road. So eight plus seven is 15 over 10. And let's turn this into a mixed number. 10 goes into 15 once with five left over, and it looks like I can simplify. So one and one half. Patient receives 1,200 milliliters of fluid every four hours over the course of 24 hours. How much fluid does the patient receive in one day? So they get this much every four hours and we wanna know how much they get in one day. So how many times are they getting this fluid? Let's take the 24 hours in a day and divide it by the four hours, the every four hours that they get it. So they're gonna get it six times. So let's take our 1,200 milliliters and multiply it by six, and we will get 7,200 milliliters. 7,200. All right, another division with fractions question. So again, we've done one like this before. Feel free to try this on your own if you wanna pause the video and then check in. We used KCF last time to help us. So we're going to try that again. Keep the first fraction, change division to multiplication, flip the second fraction. And from here, before I go across the top and the bottom to multiply, I can actually cross cancel, which is basically just finding a number on the top and the bottom that share a factor. So really these sevens are going to end up canceling out. And all I'm going to have is five over four. And five over four turned into a mixed number. It's just one and one fourth. I just saved myself a little bit of simplifying, but you could have just multiplied across the top and the bottom and then solved from there. All right, looks like we have a free response we have to plug in. Personal trainer charges her clients $50 per hour for the first hour of training. Okay and $20 for each additional half hour of training. One of her clients had a workout on Monday for 1.5 and Wednesday for 2.5 hours. How many dollars was the client charged? Fill in the blank and enter the amount in the format, da, 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 around to the answer to the nearest cent, do not include a dollar sign. Okay, cool. So let's see, their first day Monday, they did an hour and a half. So for an hour and a half, they would have been charged $50 for the first hour and $20 for each additional half hour. So that's one additional half hour. So looks like Monday would have cost 70 bucks. And then Wednesday, two and a half hours. So the first hour would be 50. And then she did another hour and a half. So 
that would be three more half hours, right? A half hour, an hour, hour and a half. So three times 20 would be 60. So we'll add those two together and that will be 110. So how much was she charged all together? 70 plus 110 will give me $180. And then to the nearest cent, 180.00. Do not include a dollar sign. Okay, I think we got it. Okay, here's another type of question that you will see on the TEAS exam. Um, this says, order all the numbers from greatest to least by dragging the numbers into the boxes in the correct order. All right, so we have a bunch of fractions and we need to order them <clears throat> by putting them in the boxes. So greatest to least. I could turn these all into decimals if I wanted to to compare. Um, I'm going to just see if I can tell what they should be here. So looking at these fractions, it looks like 7 eighths is the largest one. That's the closest to a whole. All of these are at least are under a whole. So 7 eighths and then 2 thirds. So I like think about a pizza, right? Like if it was cut into 8 pieces and you had 7 of them, you'd have more pizza than if it was cut into 3 pieces and you only had 2. So that can be a good visual to help save you some time. Um, and then from here, one fifths. So I know those are all larger than my negatives. So now let's see, negative three sixteenths is definitely smaller. If we think about the fraction three sixteenths, that's gonna be closer to zero. And that's even smaller than that. Okay, cool. So negative three fifths is the least number on there. If you had turned these all into decimals, you can compare it that way too. Sometimes that can be a little bit easier, but these seemed pretty straightforward. All right, let's subtract. Two thirds minus one third. Oh, we finally have common denominators given to us. So all we have to do is just subtract the top and keep the bottom. Two thirds minus one third is one third. A circle has a circumference of 180 inches. Find the di <laughs> diameter to the nearest tenth of an inch. Use 3.14 for pi. All right, so circumference equals pi times diameter. All right, we got to remember that. So our circumference is 180, and we're using 3.14 for pi, and it wants us to find the diameter to the nearest tenth of an inch. So all I have to do is divide each side by 3.14. So when I do that, I get about, I don't know what's going on with my pen. Let me try that again. 57.3 as my diameter. All right. So we are down to our last few questions here. If you're still with me, thanks for sticking this out. And I hope you're finding this helpful. The wait times and minutes for the last 15 customers at a restaurant are as follows. What is the effect of removing the outlier on the mean and median? Okay, so our outlier, where is the outlier? Oh, here it is, 45. So 45 minutes is the outlier. That is higher than all of the other pieces of data by quite a bit. So if you think about what would happen when you find the mean, mean is the average. So the average, when you add a higher number, is going to increase. So my mean for sure is going to increase. Now what's going to happen to my median? So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to actually find the median because this isn't always as obvious. Sometimes the median actually doesn't change depending on the set of numbers. So let's put these in order from least to greatest. Uh, I'll just do it right here. Okay, 15, 16. And normally I like to cross these off as I go, so I don't miss any. 17. 17. <laughs> Um, I have a couple 18s, 18, 18, uh, 19, 19. Now this is a little bit painstaking, but it's usually worth the time to take. I see two 20s. My pen is going wild here. If you can stick with me through it. 22. 25, is that the next one? No, 23, there we go. 23, just 
Do do. That's a three. Two twenty fives and then twenty eight. Twenty five. Twenty five and twenty eight. Okay. So wow, that's never a fun part of it. And then of course our forty five is our outlier. So if I find the median with it, it would be. Let's find the middle number. Twenty. Okay, so our median is twenty originally. Let's see if it changes. Actually, that was kind of silly. I'm just gonna. Oh, I went back way too far. Whoops. Twenty eight, and then forty five. Let me add that back in there. Went a little button happy on that one. Okay, so it was twenty before. Let's see what happens when we. Forget about this guy. All right, so we have 19 and 20 left. So our median would be 19 and a half. So our mean is gonna decrease and our median is also gonna decrease because it went from 20 to 19 and a half. All right. And we have our final question. The data set represents the number of weekly pop-up ads for 12 families. Find the median. Okay, we just did a question very similar to this where we had to find the median to answer the last question. So feel free to pause the video and try this on your own. Uh, just takes me a second to go through and write these out. So I see 120, what do we see next? 125, I see two 130s, yeah. 130, 130, and then what comes next? 145, 145, two of those. 145, 151, two, three. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to write too fast. Okay, 150. 165, 170, 175. I think I got them all. I like crossing it out because then if I forgot one, I would know because it's not crossed out, but I think I got them. So to find the median, I just cross out one in the beginning, one at the end and do that until I get to the middle. And it looks like I have 145 and 150 left. So I need to find what number is in between those two. <laughs> So you might be able to see that right in between those two would be 147.5. And if that is not obvious to you, that is okay. All we have to do is add these two numbers and then divide by two. We're essentially finding the average of those two to figure out what's right in the middle. Okay, so 147.5. All right, we did it. So thank you so much for joining me on this practice math TIS exam. Check out the links in the description of this video for some more resources to help you study. Good luck on your exam, and I hope to see you in the next video.